Last week, we remembered Jesus' popular story of the prodigal son. A young man decided an expansive estate, a place in the family business, and the love of his father just were not enough. He decided to leave home and live the so-called high life. And he said to his father, I want my inheritance and I want it now. His broken-hearted father signed over the inheritance and then the young man, to quote a Willie Nelson song, spent all his money calling everybody honey and wound up singing the blues in a pig pen. Eventually, he came to his senses and got up and went home. His daddy hugged him and kissed him and made over him and planned a party for him. Luke 15, 24 seems like a good concluding verse. This son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, says his forgiving father. Now, if this were a movie, that would be an appropriate place to fade to darkness and roll the credits. But the story goes on. Verse 25 begins, Meanwhile, the older son. Meanwhile, the older son. Those might be the four most important words in the whole story. The father threw a party for his son who had come home. The older brother just wouldn't go. The older brother was too self-absorbed and too self-righteous to go to the party. One of the servants had been busy inside the master's house making sure, you know, making sure the guests never ran low on their hors d'oeuvres and drinks. The servant took a break and walked out through the back door to get a breath of fresh air. And he heard, Psst! Hey, waiter guy, come here. The servant recognized the voice as that of the older brother. What's the party about? The older brother asked. Your brother has come home, the waiter replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. Get in there and have fun, the servant said. The music is good, the girls are pretty, and the food is free. I'm not going in, answered the older brother. I'm the one who deserves a party, not that brother of mine. He runs off and comes back and folks treat him like a war hero or something, instead of the booze and carouse and hedonist he really is. What's a hedonist? asked the waiter. Never mind, said the older brother. I'm not going in. Suit yourself, said the servant, but you're missing a real good party. The servant went in and told the father that his oldest son was really mad and refused to come to the party. Soon the screen door on the back porch swung open. It was the father. He found his oldest son sulking in the shadows. Why don't you come in, the father asked. Because I'm the one who deserves a party, not that brother of mine, answered the older brother. He runs off and comes back and folks treat him like a war hero or something, instead of the booze and carouse and hedonist he really is. What's a hedonist? asked the father. Never mind, said the older brother. I'm not going in. The father proved to be a patient man. My son, the father began, you're always with me and everything I have is yours. But your little brother, it's like he was dead and is alive again. He was lost, but now he's found. Still, the older brother would not go to the party. My hunch is that some of us are missing the party. There are two reasons why the elder brother couldn't or wouldn't enjoy the party. Resentment and self-righteousness. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. I was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost, I was blind, I was running out of time. Sin separated, the breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you held me in your side. So you made a way across the great divide left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside and there at the cross you paid the debt i owe broke my chains 
freed my soul for the first time I had hope. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has won. Inside my tomb of sin, you were buried for me three days, but then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting, and life has no end. For I have been transformed by the blood. I'm here with Kim and Brittany Proctor. And Kim and Brittany, you, you all have had a rather unique life event happen in the last week or two. Would you mind sharing with us what that was and what that experience was like for you? Well, we both were baptized this past Sunday, which was um, a very glorious event for me to share with my, my daughter. And um, it, it just was a very special time. It was an extremely special time because growing up, I thought my mom was always baptized. And she said, well, I haven't been baptized. And I'm like, 
we should do a mother and daughter baptism. <laughs> yeah. So tell me a little bit about uh, baptism, what that meant to you, and, and kind of, you know, how that signifies uh, your faith as a public proclamation of, of who it is that you believe and you follow. Well, as a child, my parents always told me that I would know when I would be ready to be in the fold with, with God. And they left it up to me to make the decision to be baptized. And there were many times I had toiled with when I was going to have my baptism. And when I came to First Baptist, I knew this was my home. I knew this is where I needed to be and where I wanted to share my time with God and to be baptized. Uh, for me, it was a, a much longer journey and, and being raised in a, a Christian household. I had my doubts and then after high school, you go to college and you're just thrown into a world of different beliefs, different opinions. And I, I, I was just, I just told myself, I don't need a God to tell me what to do or tell me how to feel. So uh, I made unfortunate mistakes in my life that I regret. And then COVID happened, graduation happened, and I was in a muck. I was depressed. I, I felt alone. And, and I suddenly, I just, I clasped my hands and I'm, I just said, look, if you're up there, talk to me or, and, or, or just something, a sign. And then... I had a question in my head asking, where are you happy with the things that you did in life? And I said, no, I'm not. I, I was absolutely miserable and um, I felt a more deeper connection and that's when I started reinvested myself in my faith and my beliefs because I was, I, I claimed to be an atheist or agnostic for, for so long. And then when I had that moment, I just felt like I, I need to get, I need to go back to my, my father. Mm. Well, it's interesting you say that because we're in the middle of a series on the prodigal son. This is the second of thir three weeks. And it sounds like based on your story that maybe you can identify a little bit with the prodigal son in the story. Is that something you would, you would say? Definitely. Because I, I, I was ready to leave. I'm like, where, where is, let's get out of here. And college is, was a big do like a opportunity of that. And like, I don't need to depend on my parents. I don't need this faith. And, and then when all that was said and done, and uh, I was like, I, I don't know if I should go back home because I have nowhere else to go. And that was my only option. Would you say the story uh, is a little, little more meaningful to you now than, than before, and how so? It's really meaningful to me because when I admitted to myself that I wasn't happy with the decisions that I made, the behaviors I was portraying to my family and friends, that it wasn't me, and that uh, when given the opportunity to go back home or uh, truly find myself through uh, God's love and hope and kindness, uh, I gritted my teeth and uh, exclaimed that Jesus, my Lord and Savior, he died for my sins and I have faith in him. Um, and it was extremely emotional and I was scared. I was terrified. I thought I was going to be shunned by the church for my past behaviors. I thought I was going to lose friends who weren't as faithful, um, but it was completely opposite. I was it was such a warm welcome, like how he threw a party for his son. Mm -hmm. It felt like that coming back to the church, coming back to seeing with Billy in the choir and getting to know Travis a lot more and getting to know you in the Bible studies a lot more. It was a truly emotional experience. That's great. Mm -hmm. And Kim, you mentioned before, you all are mother and daughter. And of course, the prodigal son is a story about a father and his two sons. Uh, how does that story have meaning for you, particularly in, in the story that you guys share in your baptism together? As Brittany has explained, she kind of has swayed away from the church and um, kind of some of the family. And so when she finally made that decision to come back, it, I felt like, I guess, the father opening up, welcoming my daughter back into our lives in a way we always wanted. Mm -hmm. So it was... Um, a wonderful experience and I was so happy to see her come back and become part of the church and part of um, 
our Christian lives. Yeah, I think for those of us who are parents, our kids never know how much we probably pray, yes. <laughs> pray for them pray, and pray, pray over pray. them. And so I, probably for you, that was an answer yes. to many, many nights and years worth of prayer. Yes. So, well, it's great Mark. to talk with you guys. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us here on TV Church. Thank you. Mm. Back to the story. The father was throwing a party for the son who had wandered, you know, gotten in trouble, and returned home. And the older brother refused to go to the party the father threw in honor of the prodigal son. Now, there are two reasons why the older brother wouldn't, just wouldn't enjoy the party. Number one, he was self-absorbed. He was jealous and resentful. It's easy to, to understand why he, the older brother, would be resentful of the party the father threw for the younger, prodigal brother. It just wasn't fair that his booze and carouse and hedonist of a brother would get all that attention and celebration. After all, the older brother had been there for his father all along, but his resentment of his little brother kept him from a really good time. It's not easy to be there for someone all along and then be gracious when the party is thrown for someone else. Do you remember Jalen Hurts, the quarterback for the University of Alabama? Now, don't let me lose you if you're not an Alabama fan, just follow me. Jalen Hurts had been the starting quarterback for Alabama and they had won every game of the 2018 season. But Alabama was getting beat, getting beat by Georgia 13 to nothing at halftime of the national championship game. And Coach Saban brought in a freshman, Tua Tonga-Vailoa, who came in and took Jalen Hurts' place. That had to be hard for Jalen to, to get benched and then, and then watch Tua, a freshman, a younger player, win that game. But Jalen Hurts was a team player. He cheered for Tua. He came in the next year when Tua got hurt and played wonderfully. Now he's playing for the Philadelphia Eagles. But having a young upstart replace him in the national championship game had to be hard. But he was, he was not bitter. That day made me who I am, Hertz later said. I wouldn't change it for the world. I don't think I would have been so mature, so poised, so unselfish. It's not easy for people who've been around and paid their dues to watch someone else take the field and get the glory. It's, it's just not fair. It, it wouldn't be easy for you or me either, I think. And, and if we're not careful, we'll miss the party. I admit, once, once I decided not to go to the party, that was about 20 years ago. And the funny thing is that for the life of me, I cannot remember now why I was so disappointed, or who I resented. But I had not gotten something I wanted, and I had decided that life is not fair, so I was sulking, I was moping, I was pouting, and so miserable over what I did not have that I wasn't enjoying the wonderful life I did have. And then I picked up a book, He Still Moves Stones by Max Lucado. He was, to, he was talking about the older brother in this story of the prodigal son. And it seemed like Lucado was writing just to me. I read, You can choose, like many, to chain yourself to your hurt. Or you can choose, like some, to put away your hurts before they become hates. You can choose to go to the party. You have a place there. Your name is beside a plate. Now, I'd been resentful and I'd refused to go to the party long enough, so I came home and I told my wife, Carrie, what I'd read and that I had decided, well, I'm going to go to the party. Simple as that. My life was wonderful, but I was too self-absorbed and too petty to enjoy it, so I decided I chose to enjoy my blessings. Resentment and bitterness can rob us of a, a great deal of life's joy. Don't be so bitter about what someone else has or what you don't have that you miss out on the joy of what you do have. Don't let resentment rob you like it did of the older brother. Don't let it rob you of the party. 
There's a second reason why the older brother missed the party. He was so self-righteous, he resented his father's grace toward his younger brother. The older brother was so self-righteous, he resented his father's grace toward his younger brother. The older brother looked like the model son on the outside. He was conscientious, constant, courteous, and compliant. He could be counted on to keep his nose clean and carry the load for his father. But all was not as it appeared. Beneath the older brother's facade of loyalty and virtue was a smug, self-righteous, holier-than-thou attitude. There was a dark side to his goodness. There often is. People who walk the straight and narrow often have little sympathy for those who fall into a ditch. Those who work hard to keep all the rules, as admirable as that is, are sometimes harsh and unforgiving. In a way, this older brother and those of us like him, are more to be pitied than the brother who landed in a pig pen. It's more difficult for so-called good people to recognize our own sins, and we can be just as far from God as the prodigals. That's why Jesus said to religious leaders, as quoted in Matthew 21, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. That had to sting. Truth is, self-righteousness, a holier-than-thou attitude, has kept many people from God, maybe as many as, as prodigal living has. And maybe that's the, the point of the story. Maybe this is really a story about the self-absorbed, self-righteous older brother, and maybe the prodigal son is just a supporting character. Maybe Jesus' primary audience was not the prodigals, but all the people who looked down on him. Prodigals. I wonder if Jesus' primary audience was, well, people like lots of us. Here's the good news. You are welcome to the party, whether you are the elder brother or the prodigal. A few years ago at a funeral back in Virginia, the preacher read from Revelation 19 and talked about the banquet, that biblical metaphor of heaven. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb, the Bible says there. The preacher emphasized the invitation to the banquet. Come, says the Bible in its last book and last chapter. And the preacher said, It don't matter how big your house is, or how long your list of friends is, or how many flowers surround your casket. What matters is the invitation. And you have one. An invitation to God's party. You are loved unconditionally by your Creator, whether you're more like the prodigal or the resentful older brother. Whether you've been to the pig pen or your first instinct is to think you're better than folks in the pig pen. God wants all of us. God wants you at His party. I come with no defense Can't prove my end My only hope remains Grace upon grace Can't pay for what I've done My sin I can't Your mercy made a way with grace upon grace. So, like an ocean wave crashing over me, come and drown my shame in your mercy.
your blood for my mistakes my treason in exchange for grace upon Today, Travis talked about our tendency to be self-absorbed, which can lead to a feeling that we are more deserving than others and they don't deserve our grace. For those of us willing to recognize that and set it aside, there's a place at the Father's party too. Whether you've been too far from home like the younger brother or too self-absorbed for mercy like the older brother, know that you're welcome back. Text us at the number on your screen so that we can reach out to you and help you on that journey. There are lots of ways to join the Father's party. If you'd like to start that process with us, in addition to texting, you can check out our Facebook page, explore our website at fbchsv.org, or take a look at tvchurch.info. If you're near enough to join us for in-person events, know that you're welcome. But if not, you'll find resources and opportunities that you can enjoy. Join us in this closing prayer. God eternal, whose light divides the day from night and turns the shadow of death into the morning. Drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that, having done your will with cheerfulness while it was day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks and join your party. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>